Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Walking Through Glass, the podcast with your host, Dr. Dina C. Brown. to come to you this Monday morning. I feel like it's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you without my voice to step to. Yes, yes, yes. I um, took a couple of days during the 4th of July holiday week. I was actually traveling. Um, However, that is not an excuse to not record because I actually usually record on the go. But each time I wanted to sit down and, and put forth the message. It lacked, you know, some of that clarity and flow that I wanted to have. And so I just took that as a sign to just, you know, pause for a moment. However, there's a couple of um, nuggets that I want to share from that. I'm taking that pause and I want to speak all this week about relationships, right? Um, about relationships. So, um, this week, or um, last week actually, as I head home today from New Orleans, uh, my sisters and I got a chance to travel together to Essence Fest for their 25th um, year anniversary in New Orleans, and it was fantastic. We were celebrating my baby sister's birthday, and also just being one of the first times that we've been away together for the pure pleasure of just going away together. And although I've been to Essence a couple of times before, my two sisters hadn't. So that was also a unique experience. I'm just shutting that door a little bit because I'm trying to be respectful um, in talking on um, this morning when I'm doing um, this podcast. Because I said, you know what? I missed doing my daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D. I missed doing my daily dose of vitamin Dr. D. And I didn't expect to miss it as much as I did. I kept feeling like I wanted to stop and record and in different places and um, catch some interviews and do that. And I thought, wow, you know, this is totally different than before when each time I would start, you know, considering doing a daily podcast because the daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D and Walking Through Glass, the podcast is available Monday through Friday with those 15, 20 minute segments for those of you that are listening um, for the very first time. I do invite you to go back and listen to prior episodes because there's some rich nuggets in there. And part of my journey, me embracing my journey, my entrepreneurial journey, my motivational, inspirational, empowering, transformative journey was to become more consistent And I've always loved the talk space, the talk radio. I did Los Angeles talk radio, LA talk radio for a while. And when I realized that it really didn't serve me the way I needed to to serve me, then I knew I had to make a shift and I had to make a change. And that led me back to what I was supposed to do initially and originally was launch the podcast, which gave me uh, more not only just creative control, but timing because I could record when I want. I can interview as many people as I wanted. And the length of the episodes were um, could, were determined by the opportunity to discuss and engage in the guests that were on the show or the message that I was able to bring before you. So that being said, I really thought, okay, this week, you know, I'm doing my meditation. I'm doing my prayer. I'm going, what's the message? And it's been niggling there for me since last week because we flew on Thursday, um, 4th of July. And um, I believe my last show, my last episode was probably Wednesday. And um, I just kept saying, what's the message? And really it's about relationships. Because I spoke about being free. I spoke about having the courage. And the next step for this week in these conversations, these conscious conversations, all right, to help you just add that other little piece, that other little catalytic Um, nudge to go in the direction that's in your best interest, right? Was relationships. So not only did I get the chance to do a girl's trip with my sisters, I was also invited to speak to a couple of panels here during the Essence Fest weekend. And it was phenomenal 
So on the first brunch Friday with the Miss CEO entrepreneurial um, panels, these amazing women who came together from all over different places to share their entrepreneurial journey and to provide nuggets to help other women on that entrepreneurial journey um, was just simply golden. And so I want to talk, speak to there about your relationship capital, right? People that I'm closely connected to, I constantly share with them that if I know them, then you know them. Okay, I'm going to say that again. If I know them, then you know them. If you're connected to me in that manner. And that's the power of relationship capital. So knowing the fact that you have a solid, clear, supportive, very strong relationship with someone. Those are the people who are connected to you in life in love and business are also connected to them. So rolling that all the way back to you. And I roll that all the way back to myself because at the very core of who I am and what I do and what my mission and what I'm called to do, inspire, empower, and transform lives, all is part and partial to the relationships that I build with others. But guess what? The relationship is not about others. The relationship is about how I feel about me. How do I feel about Dina? What does Dina think about Dina? How does Dina walk, speak, engage? Because how I walk, speak, engage, and own my truth is going to impact the way that I build relationships and who I build those relationships with. So the highest version of relationship capital was worth money. The golden ticket is the relationship you have with you. So spend some time really being very clear about that. So when you show up in your circles, that you're very confident and that confidence and your consistency will attract the people who are not only called, you're called to serve, but also who are called to walk the journey with you. And that's the power of relationship capital. So you see, these women came from all over to speak to other women. But what was formed there, because the vision of one woman was a very powerful new version of sisterhood. I met some amazing women that I would not probably had just walked across any day. Because while well, we live in different parts of the the country and we do similar things, but it was the relationship with Jessica that brought us together and not only just in person in New Orleans, but actually online. And what was birthed from that was new business connections, new um, relationship connections, new collaborations, new ideas. And that's the power of relationship capital. And so during um, my experience, you know, I always kind of spend some time just sitting back and reflecting. And I love watching people as much as I love being on stage and um, entertaining, edutaining, I call it. I do love to sit back and watch people and to see people just unfurl and to grow and to shine and for something to just be broken open inside of them, to connect to other women, particularly that were on the same, not only on the same journey, but actually following very similar paths. And see, the challenge when we're on this journey is sometimes we feel so very alone. Am I the only person that feels this way? Am I the only person that, you know, is, is out here experiencing this? And the answer is no. But if we don't share our stories and we don't connect, then it's very difficult 
for us to be able to attract and actually build that circle, that tribe that we need, not just to survive. We can survive on our own, but to thrive, we got to go together. And so I sat there and I thought, okay, I met some women that it was just such a beautiful opportunity to be connected to them. And in talking to them and during my particular talk, and my theme was really embrace the journey. Embrace the journey. And one point that I shared, and when I said this, it was like people just lit up all over the room. I said, here's what I need all people to understand who connect with me, see me, want to do business with me, want to work with me, want me to coach them, want me to speak to their audiences, etc. Is that I am so clear about who I am and confident about what I do, what my gifts are. And now... I've become even more consistent in that message and really sharing that part of me, okay, with the world. That I can support you and see your beauty. Because first, I had to see that beauty, that glory in myself so that I can recognize it in other people. So that's why that relationship is so important that you have with yourself. And what I shared with them was I love me and if you do that's a bonus and they giggled and they laughed and they raised their church imaginary church fans but what I saw across this room of approximately about a hundred women or so were these twinkles in their eyes and I realized that that is part of the issue that is something we have to work on that is the problem that I am here and I'm called to solve how to help women see recognize be very clear be very confident and consistent about who they are how they show up and what they do in service but the other secondary piece of that was I have to ask the question, who are you and do you love you? And the reason many women are jealous or petty. Now, let me scratch that. I'm not just putting a hit on women. Why? People, period. Men and women. Jews and Gentile. Okay? Millennial, non-millennial. The reason why people have such a problem with other people is because inherently they have a problem with who they are from the inside out. And you know what's so sad about that? It's many times they don't recognize the pattern. They don't recognize the pattern of jealousy. They don't recognize the pattern of, you know, um, frustration and irritation and judgment and pettiness. How do I know these things? Huh? Because during this walk, I had to call myself to the table. When I saw someone doing something that I know that I could do, and I could say, oh, I could do better, strong, whatever else. And then the first thing I started to look at and see and, and begin to pick apart what they were doing. And so on this journey of consciousness, I'm going to say that again, on this journey of consciousness, I had to unmask some hidden beliefs and hidden truths about myself so that I could show up and serve better. And I realized that there were certain anxieties, there were certain reservations, there were certain things that I didn't like about me. That when I saw that in other people, whether it was a plus or minus, meaning they were doing it and they're not doing it, that it was bringing out this version of me that I didn't care for. It wasn't the authentic version of me. So I had to do the work. And the work started with me choosing to love me. First. Choosing to love me first. And when I began to say, I'm going to choose me first. Before Xavier, who everybody knows is my son and the love of my life. I'm going to choose me first. Things began to change. If you begin to change the way you think, 
your actions will surely follow. So what did I do? I started to consider me and consider me selfishly, unapologetically first. What does that look like? If I don't want to go to that particular place and there's no reason to go, I say no. And I let it be a complete sentence. Now, as a parent, there's some compromise I have to make. But now, Xavier's a driver. So guess what? I, I could even say no more often. And actually, he wants me to say no more often because he wants to just drive himself. But I realized the power of your voice and really walking in your truth and loving yourself on purpose and on purpose. And everything that I learned about really beginning to be unapologetic about this is I learned from being a mom, being particularly Xavier's mom. So the last example I want to share with you today, because I want you to really just kind of get going this day with loving yourself on purpose and being totally motivated. And I hope that this daily dose of vitamin Dr. D is really um, setting a stage for you to pull back some layers, okay, and to look at the relationships that you have in your life and your surroundings and your tribe, that's going to help you walk more so in your truth. And your truth starts with how you see and how you love yourself. So this particular um, situation was on 4th of July, and that's the day that I was flying to New Orleans, and I was beginning to feel mommy guilt and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going away with my sisters. I'm leaving my baby. And he does have to work tomorrow. But it's going to be the 4th of July. I'm traveling on the 4th of July. That's supposed to be for family and friends. And so I started doing all this big rigmarole tape in my head. And um, started to feel my energy levels go low and my regret go high. And so what I did... To make myself feel better, I then start calling all my siblings and saying, hey, you know, I don't want Xavier just to kind of like be alone, not with his siblings. Now, pull my chair, pause. He wasn't going to be home by himself, but he wasn't going to have like me there and my family um, there. And I start to try to make myself feel better. I start calling people. And saying, okay, and they're like, okay, he can come here. And I said, Xavier, you're supposed to be with your family. So you can go to my brother Floyd's house. You can go spend time with um, your Auntie Shell. You can go spend time with Uncle Sid and your cousins, which you used to spend Fourth of July with anyway and do fireworks. But I don't want you just to hang out with your friends and just be without um, me, you know. And so and he's like, okay. So he was, you know, that morning I was getting ready and he was kind of whatever. And I said, oh, I want you to spend the night with your cousins because I don't want you driving home the night of 4th of July. I don't want you driving the night. And, you know, people do crazy stuff. They're shooting guns and fireworks and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm watching his face and I'm just dancing. But empathically, I just felt so much sorrow coming from him. So right before he was going to drop me off at my sister's, to go to the airport as a savior. I said, do you have your stuff? Cause you have to work tomorrow and I don't want you driving tonight. Remember he's like, yes. And he's going through. And so then I said, okay, savior. I said, well, honey, did you have any plans or something? He said, well, yeah, I did. I said, excuse me. He said, yeah, I did. We were going to Marie's house and to her parents beach house and all the friends and the families we were going to have, you know, cook out on the beach, hang out, watch the fireworks. And and his friend's house is close to our house as opposed to going out to um, to my other sister's house. And I said, wait, 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 wait. Why didn't you say something? I would have never started orchestrating all of these plans. Because, see, you see, he wouldn't plan on spending the 4th of July with me no way. <laughs> Hello. If I stayed home, he was going to want to be out with his friends and I was going to just be home alone. And so I said, why didn't you say something? I didn't know you had plans. And he says, well, because, you know, I thought you wanted me. Here, here's the nugget. I thought you wanted me 
to spend time with my cousins and my family and be with family. I said, I do want you to do that. I do want you to realize and start finding those opportunities to be with your family instead of always with your friends. I said, but if you have plans and I knew I wasn't going to be here, I didn't want you to be by yourself, you know, and just kind of sitting around and, you know, et cetera. And he says, oh, no. I said, well, honey, you can, you don't have to go and stay with your cousins all night. You can drop me off and come back and go to the beach and do whatever. Immediately light and sparkles and sprinkles and just, you know, sparklers start coming from this child. And I said, honey, you got to speak up. you got to say something. So in asking him to say something, um, I, um, I noted that for him, he was now lighter he was more excited and he started to talk to me. He smiling at me. He told me to put my bags in the car. And I just said, you have to do and say something, especially in regards to what's best for you. And when you do that, you can live your life on purpose with purpose. And so he turns around and he says, okay, mom, he said, I'm going to drop you off, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time with them. And then I'll come back and go, um, going out with my friends, but I'm going to spend some time with the family today before going back. It was a win-win. And I thought, how many times do we deny ourselves and tell ourselves no when, so that we can tell somebody else yes. And when we do that, we're damaging the relationship capital we have with ourselves. We're doing something we really want that's going to bring us joy. So on this Monday, this magnificent Monday, this motivational Monday, I charge you to go and do something just for you. Begin to build a solid relationship with you first so that you can positively impact and build a comprehensive relationship with others. So that's what I got for you today. On this magnificent Monday, as we talk about relationships all week, please, please, please make sure you invite a friend to listen and learn and get their daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D. And I encourage you, I am here for you, and I have more surprises and some things to share coming, and I appreciate you. So, why don't you go love on you? Have a great day, a phenomenal week, and I look forward to having a chat with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.